As we start, I'd like to acknowledge that I am coming to you today from uh, the east end of Toronto, which is the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee, Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Anishinaabewake peoples, um, and is governed or covered maybe by the Williams Treaty of 1923. And so one of the things I'm doing is um, learning what I can about the Williams Treaties so that I understand the history and the intent behind um, what was supposed to happen around the caretaking of this land. Um, so I'd invite you just to uh, to think about where you are and what, what that means uh, for you and what it's meant over time. Our uh, webinar today, though, uh, is coming to us as uh, part of the foundation's commitment toward becoming an anti-racist organization. So the board uh, officially uh, adopted um, that stance uh, in 2021, and it's a continuous process journey of learning, work, and change uh, that we are on, and um, invite you all to, to think about that as well as we go forward. And um, anti-racism racism is one of the four priorities of the foundation as named in our uh, strategic plan. The others are care for creation, uh, reconciliation, indigenous justice, and communities of faith. So information about all of that is on our website if you'd uh, like to take a look at that at some point. So that's unitedchurchfoundation.ca. But for today, we are focusing on the on the anti-racism piece, and I'm so pleased to have with us Jamie Holtum and Ronnie Be Behari. Behari? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. I checked your first name, but now you're last. So um, uh, from North Bramley United, uh, which is uh, sort of northwest of Toronto, um, and um, in June 20. 20, the congregation did a Sunday worship series um, that was all about anti-Black racism and called the Table of Reconciliation. Um, so uh, Jamie and Ronnie have said it was one of the most powerful series that North Bramley uh, has ever done. And um, they are continuing to, like there's a continuous desire to carry on the work and bring greater awareness and action to racial justice. So. Jamie uh, has been in full-time ministry at North Bramley um, since July 1998, um, and he enjoys being part of the vital congregation that continues to grow and experience the transformation of Jesus's love for all people. And um, Ronnie is uh, an ordained minister since 2017, um, but began working in the church um, many years ago. <laughs> uh, and so she also began her involvement in racial justice training as a core member in the first facilitation team with the Center for Intercultural Learning and Leadership with the Canadian Council of Churches. Um, and so I am looking forward to, uh, to hearing from you both. Um, perhaps you would like to take a, a minute to introduce yourselves and, and just share a little bit about what what is the table of reconciliation and, and how did it come to be? Awesome. Well, uh, I can I can jump in. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Sarah. And uh, just want to say hello, everybody. Really, really great to be with you. We were saying just before we started, isn't it amazing how far we've come with technology? Uh, yeah, certainly before COVID, but COVID has, has magnified that. Here we are. Um, a number of us together on a call, learning and growing together. I don't know what it's like where you are, but uh, here in Brampton, the Toronto area, we got quite a bit of snow uh, yesterday, last night. So we just wouldn't have been connected in, in the same numbers as we are. And so it's anyway, just blessed and grateful to be alive and to be connected with you today. Um, as said, uh, yeah, my name is Jamie Holtum, and uh, I've been here at North Bramley United Church in Brampton. It'll be 25 years this uh, July, which it, it just seems impossible. I, I don't feel like I'm old enough to have been in one place for 25 years, um, but here I am, here we are. Uh, I was actually here as a student as well at, at, at we call NBUC for short, North Bramley United Church. And uh, I can honestly say that uh, I feel just as blessed, my family and I feel just as blessed to, to be here serving, not only in this church, but in the city and beyond as well. It's very much a part of the, our culture and DNA here at NBUC. 
um, as, as when we first came and so grateful for that. And I'm not saying that there hasn't been some issues and transitions and challenges um, all along the way, but especially the last few years, but uh, really do feel grateful to, to, be, uh, to be serving here and part of the United Church of Canada where, yeah, we, we take seriously these, these um, issues around working for justice and reconciliation. And just wanna kind of confess if I could that, uh, um, the, especially around racial reconciliation, anti-black racism, um, my heart got stirred like 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 many um, after the George Floyd uh, situation, the tragedy, uh, and, and I, I wish I could say that that it wasn't that I would have been against it, um, but I just became more of a I, I, I would say an advocate huh? um, and wanted to lead the conversation and initiate the conversation uh, after that. A lot, a lot of things happened after that that led to that. So I just want to kind of name that there's people certainly in our church um, and probably people on this call who have been working in this area. Um, a lot more intentionally for longer than, than I have. And so absolutely don't come with any sense of expertise in this, um, but certainly glad to share with you what God's doing in our, uh, in our community, in, in, in my life and leadership as well. Um, we'll get into the table of reconciliation. <laughs> the short answer is there that question, what is it? We're, we're still figuring it out a little bit, to be honest, uh, but maybe that's okay. Uh, because uh, what happened was we did it. We did a series June 2020, as Sarah said, um, as as just part of the response to what was going on in the world, and we did a four week Sunday morning series on anti black racism, and we called it the Table of Reconciliation. We knew that this wasn't meant to be a series um, that would end. That it was, it was a movement, and so I guess if God leads the movement, which I think God does, um, it makes sense that this movement of the Table of Reconciliation is still sort of being figured out on what that's going to look like, what that's going to be. Like like um, as we as we go along, but we're, we're committed to um, just doing whatever we can to keep the work uh, moving forward. And this is this is this is part of it. Um, an event we'll tell you about that's coming up um, in, in, in June called the Table of Reconciliation. Yeah, I, I'll stop there because I know we're going to keep talking about it and, and grateful to the opportunity to, to do that, to share. I um, want to give Ronnie a chance. Uh, Ronnie uh, has just joined our team in uh, January, but in a really good way. It feels like Ronnie's been here a whole lot longer than that. And uh, Ronnie and I have talked many times over the last uh, several weeks how, how blessed we feel just to, to be serving together with the team that, that we get to serve with here at NBUC. And so I'll turn it over to you, Ronnie, now and just uh, want to say again, thanks uh, for God's call in your life <laughs> to be part of the team here at NBUC. Thanks, Jamie. Um, my name is Ronnie. My name is Ronnie B. Harry, and um, I, I see that Darren Leopold is on this call, and we connected many years ago. I can't see everyone who's on the call, uh, so some of you might have known me, but Darren and I connected um, when I worked as a student minister in Adrian Court, and I think I did pulpit supply at his church um, as part of a preaching exchange. Um, so that's, uh, I've been around for a while, um, and um, somewhere between 2005 and 2006, the United Church cast a vision um, for becoming an intercultural church. And at the same time, as a racialized woman, I also experienced systemic racism in, in my own life. And um, academically, I was inclined to examine and do work on colonial approaches to mission and how systemic racism and attitudes around cultural support, superiority and race. Um, I, I became painfully aware of that history and how I internalized that history. Um, and um, I had a real passion to unlearn and become a part of this intercultural vision, this vision of a beloved community where we affirm people for who they are and that God is at work in their life experiences. So that kind of opened a door. God has a way of opening doors. And I worked on a presbytery subcommittee. Um, I had done a placement in Trinidad with the Canadian Churches Forum for Global Mission, and their focus had changed towards um, racial justice training. So I got invited to be a part of the first core training facilitation team. So that gives you a sense of who am I as a racial justice person. And then 
the work of racial justice formation, I, I did some work with the forum. Um, I also uh, did some work with almost every local congregation that I've served in. And um, I have been called to North Bramley United Church as the Minister of Discipleship. I am six weeks in. About, <laughs> um, and as part of the discernment process, I was invited to pitch a proposal, to put together a proposal for a discipleship pathway. And so, um, so basically, I thought, wow, I'm going to go and look and see everything that was done with the table of reconciliation in 2000 and, um, and, and put forward a proposal based on the um, collaboration that, that I've, I've been a part of with the um, now Center for Intercultural Learning and Leadership and um, as a way of taking this forward. Um, supporting what's going on, celebrating what has happened, listen, listening, learning from that, and then um, maybe trying to encourage the church to dream a little bit about how can we go deeper with this. So as far as the table of reconciliation goes, I'm really humbled that all of this work has happened before I arrived, and I'm in discernment as to Okay, so how do we move forward together? Um, and, and, and some of that um, would entail building on the legacy that Rebecca Freer, who couldn't be with us today, um, she, she, she was part of that vision. I, I'm, so I'm, I'm listening, I am learning, and I am praying, God, how can I help to... Mm -hmm. I'll be a part of taking this forward because I see racial justice and discipleship formation um, as interrelated. Like they're one and the same. Um, so that's who I am, and I'm really humbled to be here. Thank you both. It's uh, it's really wonderful to hear about how you came to this work and and you know and 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 your your passion and vision for it is, is and enthusiasm for it is is uh, is really coming through. So that's wonderful. I wonder if you might say a little bit about um, why the project is so important for the community that you're in that you're creating that you serve. Ronnie, you've touched on it just now a little bit, saying you know it's it's the same, it's part of discipleship, but it's the same kind of thing. So like, how do, how, how does that importance to the community um, sort of sh show up? Like how, how is that happening? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll maybe go back to uh, how, how we even came up with this term, the table of reconciliation, because it's a very interesting story. Um, we, we really felt led to do a Sunday morning series. Again, we've done work on, on a Sunday morning before around racial reconciliation, but for us to take four weeks, four Sundays through the whole month of June 2020 was a really big commitment for us to, 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 to have that kind of time on one topic. And so as we developed the series, um, we, we really felt the need to talk with, with people um, who could give us input, people from the Black community, particularly because it really was around anti-Black racism. We tried to be clear, um, absolutely all forms of racism are wrong. We hope that what we learn from this series helps us with Islamophobia, helps us with being affirming church, like with all those things, but we really felt focused, the need to focus on anti-Black racism, partly because of what was going on in the world at the time. And so we, I'll never forget this call, we had a Zoom call with several leaders from, who are not from our church, but are from the Black community here in Brampton. And uh, it was it was a call that had uh, uh, I, yeah if I could say and, and I just want to say people who are much more able um, and have done more work around racial justice please 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 if I say anything that isn't correct or any wrong terms please by all means feel free to correct me if not now um, reach out to me because we're learning together and, and I just want to be able to talk but also recognize that I don't always get it right so just want to say that but anyway so in this group we we had a Zoom call with. 50% white, 50% black, and, and we just went at it in a really beautiful way. There was no ego or pride. I would say we all came out of that call transformed by the love of God. There was 
love on this call in the room in this in this and we got into some really deep stuff on on privilege white privilege and and systemic racism and and we got into the details of what the series was going to look like what scriptures we're going to use like and it was just it was again it was transformative and and for us i i think for all of us on, on that call um I, I will never forget that 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 experience that night and and the the idea of coming together with people who are different people from yourself people who are going to listen to each other and grow together and anyway on that night um, one of the leaders from the from the black community here in Brampton, they offered the name. You should call this series the Table of Reconciliation because we're all coming to the table together. We're going to eat together. We're going to share life together. We're going to grow together. We're going to be a human race together. It's the Table of Reconciliation. So we're like, oh yeah, okay, for sure. So that's kind of where the name came from. And then after the series, as I said, we were really, really. Um, passionate that this couldn't just stop with a series. Like that would be the almost not quite the worst thing because at least we'd done something to raise awareness, education. Um, we were praying. Um, there was things happening in, in people's work life. Like I, I've, I've, I'm still hearing stories from people from that series who lead their organization differently because of the work we did that June 2020. Like so, to be to be even more concrete, diversifying their leadership teams um, it, very intentionally. Uh, yeah, so just huge stuff like that, but uh, we, we just knew we had to keep it going. And so we actually started doing a monthly table of reconciliation gathering and uh, it was great for a while, but what happened was, uh, and, and uh, Ronnie had mentioned Rebecca Freer, um, formerly Cabby Saba, but she was married uh, just a little over a year ago. Um, Rebecca is our communications lead at MBUC and she was leading the table of reconciliation work and doing a, a, just a phen phenomenal job. But, but I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but uh, a month goes by really quickly, right? And so the energy that it was taking to rally people together for one more, it, it was just it was just too much. And so we decided, let's try to have an annual event called the Table of Reconciliation and really make it a, a significant gathering of people. Um, partly being in, in this city, let alone this church for 25 years, partly because of the DNA of our, our church, we're very involved in the Brampton community and beyond. And so God has blessed us with a platform where we, we can bring people together, like, like we're anticipating um, several hundred people to come together for the table of reconciliation and just to really increase uh, the movement and the people who are part of part of this movement. So anyway, that's kind of the shift as we move into 2023, where this annual, which will be the first this Sunday, June 11th in the evening table of reconciliation event, um, it will be streamed online. And I just recognize as, I'm, as we're talking here that we have people, I suspect, from from across the country. So if you and your community will want to want to participate, be a part of it, it, it will be streamed. And it, we, it's not meant just for us. This is work that we're all trying to do, I think. And if it's helpful, we'd love to have others um, join us that night. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And I, we can be sure to uh, circulate links and information ahead of time so that that folks are able to uh, to join. Um, so I think you mentioned a really important point there, Jamie, is that you started in one way and then you moved, you wanted to continue. So it sort of shifted to those monthly and then you're shifting again to, to you know, to an annual big pulling folks in. Um, I wonder, you know, what, what you would say about that sort of evolution and, and you know, beyond the event you're going to have in June, do you like what do you think might oh, okay. happen in the future? I, I can I can stop this anytime. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I think yeah. I'm... Ashley, do you want to mute folks, and then yeah. we'll unmute her? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's that's an excellent question. Um, you know, if if there were two things that I think our hopes would be, and and we're just in the stage of getting the planning team together and meeting. So this is this is from my head and heart. And Ryan and I've talked just a little bit about it. The the awareness piece will be huge. It, just making people more aware. Um, part of Black History Month, we, Ronnie led a, a with a few others from our church a discussion on the and the movie Harriet last Thursday night. And, and just even having had that conversation again, I know my wife, Katrina, and I were like, we, we were just so blessed to be part of the conversation. We, you can forget, you can forget, and just to increase the awareness that we got to keep working at this. It's a long haul project, initiative, movement here. So the awareness would be one. Action is, is absolutely, so I don't know what that action is. We have a few ideas, but really hope that we are bringing together um, many, many people who will also be led to move and act on this in, in their own environments as part of disciple, as part of being a follower of Jesus. 
Um, one of the options I think that we'll work on is some that Ronnie has has done um, a lot of work on already, and that's a, a, a bit of a, a training, a curriculum on what it would be to work at intercultural living and life. And Ron, I don't know if you want to say a little bit about that, but uh, I was just reviewing it this morning and exchange a text with Ronnie. Uh, I just I just think it's 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 uh, it, it, I can't wait to see what might happen if we um, give people an opportunity to go through the kind of work that you're looking at leading us through, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. So I just want to offer a bit of a preamble. Um, so the, the preamble is I was listening to Jamie talk about the table of reconciliation and my heart went to another table where Jesus had entered the house of a Gentile woman, a Syrophoenician woman. And I'm imagining that maybe they were sitting across a kitchen table of some sort. And um, the woman's child is sick, right? And you would do anything for a sick child. And being a Gentile woman, she comes to Jesus and asks him to heal her child. Um, and of course, Jesus, um, he's tied to a particular history and a social location. He names his bias of, of being sent to the children of Israel first. And then he made this statement that's just really unsettling for most of us um, that, you know, you don't take food that are meant for children and throw it to the dogs. And I can't imagine what, what, what happened behind the scenes, but we know how the story ends. And I imagine so they were sharing of stories, that's part of it. And there was an examination, the spirit worked through her to facilitate an examination of assumptions about how God works and how justice works. And Jesus caught a glimpse of that woman as a child of God. And that her faith was grounded in her identity, that her identity was not a barrier to grace. And there were channels of communication that opened up. So a part of this discipleship um, pathway that I am hoping for that will become integrated with the work uh, that was done by, that was done through the table of reconciliation is let's open up that table further. Let's look at a systemic way of, of, of um, examining who Jesus is as a person who engages interculturally. To draw on the tradition of scripture. Let's have some, let's have a teaching series on that. Um, let's get to know the local context. I'm a brand new minister in Brampton. I, 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 it's, it's racially diverse, economically diverse. We started doing that work just last week as we visited the Journey Neighborhood Center and did a walking tour and learned more about the realities of people living there. And, and, and um, my hope is that we, we will continue to hold space for listening to stories, but we will also put into place and um, as part of um, my project proposal, I, 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 I immediately contacted Reverend Dr. Jonathan Schmidt, who is the Associate Secretary um, with the intercultural um, learning and lead, leadership group that is now a part of the Canadian Council of Churches, um, looking at ways in which um, we can work collaboratively to create um, a workshop, a learning event for, to facilitate um, examining racism, examining power and privilege, and Jamie alluded to the Harriet event. One of the things that happened, we had an event that, that, um, that included an educator from North Bram Bramley, a racialized educator 
Um, and um, so together we figured we didn't just want to talk about Harriet Tubman as a person from history, but we wanted to talk about the legacy and get people thinking about the legacy of what it means to be a facilitator of liberation, called to be a facilitator of liberation. And coming out of that night was a strong interest to examine systemic racism. We have work to do between now and June 11th and looking beyond June 11th as to how this table of reconciliation might continue to celebrate stories, but move towards this unlearning of, of uh, racism, this examination of racism, examination of power and privilege. Um, and that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, we have smaller steps looking at how to do an introductory mini workshop and then um, more opportunities to reflect on that and then how to expand out into uh, something that might include um, more churches and more sectors within Brampton itself. Um, yeah. So this plan actually was something like a, a, at least a three-year plan. So back in June 2020, you started with uh, like a series of, of uh, Sunday morning series, and then it, it's morphed into uh, monthly meetings and now to an annual event and probably to something bigger that's that's more of a continuous learning conversation education on a on a variety of pieces and and um points related to um anti-racism so that's that's amazing like that is um um just an, inc an incredible journey that you're on and and it's really wonderful to be able to see it sort of taking different shapes along along as you move through it um, one of the things that you've talked about is inviting community in, and that can be really um, intimidating for a lot of folks. Like, Jamie, when you were saying you you invited a group of Black community leaders who aren't involved in the church, and like, how do you, how do you go about that? How do you find people that are going to be receptive? How do you, like, how do you make those invitations? Mm -hmm. That's a great, uh, yeah, great question, um, Sarah. Uh, if I think, um, boy, uh, with, with this particular situation, um, if we, uh, we we uh, we have our podcast. We have a we have a, a weekly podcast called the Good News Podcast, and and what happened was um, we. Uh, I'll kind of tell you how, the backstory how we got to this very very interesting transformative meeting. So we asked uh, our mayor, Mayor Patrick Brown, to, to join me on the podcast so we could talk about what the city was doing around Black History Month and how we could support that and be part of that. So Patrick uh, Brown, I, I think, wisely said, well, I'll come, but I, I would want to bring Gwen Chapman, who is my senior advisor around anti-Black racism. And so uh, Gwen basically, in a beautiful way, took over the whole conversation because she had the most to say and it was incredible. And then so, after that, Gwen said, anything you are doing at the church that I can help around this, let me know. So when we go, went to do this series, we called Gwen and Gwen brought a number of her contacts and friends to this meeting. And that's kind of how it happened. You know what I mean? So we worked through one that led to a number of other other people. So that that's that's. I don't know if that gives the how to, but that's sort of how that one happened in particular. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say partly because of who we are as a church. And I suspect that many of the churches on this call would, would, would be able to say the same thing. Um, we just continue to build relationships in the community because we're so involved in the community. We believe um, we have three core values to be passionately Christ-centered, um, to be radically inclusive and to be relentlessly reaching out. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're just consistently involved in the community in a way that we we build these relationships o o over time. Mm -hmm. um, as I said earlier, I, I think too, just one of the one of the gifts that we've been blessed with is to have longevity here in leadership, and that does allow for those relationships to build o o over the year. Um, I would just want to encourage us um, 
those 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 happen over time. So just to to take our it doesn't have to be many people. It could be one person. Um, what I experienced through again, really after the George Floyd situation, um, it was it was shocking to me. Um, I just and I I, I feel very um, sad that I didn't realize this or didn't know this, but it was shocking to me that friends of mine here in Brampton, including members of our church who are black, were were being were being treated so poorly. Um, and and so I I just found myself really calling up friends and who I've known for years and saying, can I ask you about this? Is this is this your truth? Is this your reality? And it just opened the door to conversations that um, were were I, I know for me a blessing to hated hearing it, but grateful for the openness and the awareness. And it just has motivated again me to be continue to work at this more more and more. But I think from the other side, the people who I reached out to, they 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 were nothing but um, grateful uh, for the intentionality of ha opening up those conversations because at least the, the people I talk to, um, it's not something that, that people often talk about, at least everyday kind of conversations, um, not how people lead in a conversation, but if we ask and we're willing to listen um, with just humility and grace and openness, um, yeah, th th that can lead to the kinds of relationship we're talking about where we all can learn and grow together, I think. Thank you for that. So, I mean, I, I think what I'm what I'm hearing in so many ways in this project is you um, started in one place, and um, you know you took a step which led to something else, which led to something else, and the same with the connections you made one, which brought on others, and so it's just kind of grown and and uh, taken shape from there. Um, so you know. Um, aside from the excellent work that this project is, uh, one of the reasons we invited you folks to join was because um, you were, this is partly, at least in part, supported um, through a Seeds of Hope grant, which we, you know, we're sort of in the middle of our usual spring application cycle. And I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about, about that as well. Um, you know, why you decided to apply your, your perspective on the, on the process. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, I, I love the fact that uh, um, twice a year, generally, you know, April and October, there's a deadline. <laughs> I think most of us work towards deadlines. So, um, yeah, it's always on our radar. Hey, what, what, are, what's, what's God doing in our community right now that would be um, worth uh, applying for a grant for? Um, so that that because of those deadlines, so just to kind of love appreciate that that, that that that's very helpful for us. Um, and then I guess this one in particular, we 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 really felt called and convicted to, to do this, and and we we I knew that that I'd appreciate the clarity from the foundation and seeds of hope work on what are the main priorities and str strategic um, realities, and so recognizing the alignment around this particular theme and initiative. Uh, it, it felt like, yeah, this would be one that I think the foundation would want to, you know, would want to support. Um, it also helps us do it. Like, I think we are, uh, you know, I, I'd like to think, and I, I think it's true that we're, we were going to do this anyway. Um, but when you get a grant, then it's like, okay, huh, came, came on. Now we have to do it. And we want to, believe me, but it, it's very helpful. So there's a lot, lots, of, lots of good reasons. And I just want to say, appreciate the support of the foundation um, it's been a blessing to be connected for, for years. And I, I just find, you know, we talk about, sorry, about the evolution of, of different ministries, um, but they all need a start and they all need to start somewhere. And uh, the seeds of hope really are very helpful in getting things started. We've got a number of things around the church that we've done um, and that continue and, and have morphed and changed and uh, over the years as God has led us. But but, uh, but there's many things that have been started uh, because of the support of the Seeds of Hope. Money is very helpful, absolutely, because sometimes it costs money to do some things. But I would say just as important is the encouragement, the, the um, hey, we're not the only ones who think this this is this is a, 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 an idea that's worth trying. And, and so just appreciate that uh, from the foundation's uh, level. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so I guess uh, before I sort of turn it over to our our other folks on the line with us here for any questions that they have, I'm wondering like the, what your advice would be for congregations, communities of faith that are wanting to start something either related to anti-racism or, you know, just a, a new aspect of ministry in their community. Would you have some learnings or advice to share? 
do something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that, like, just don't get, do, don't get, make it so complicated that you get paralyzed. You don't do everything, do something, do one thing, you know, as I said, reach out to somebody who's different from ourselves and find out what their experience like and listen and take notes and then pray about it and see what God does. You know, there's one, you know, we watch, there, there are, there are so many amazing movies that can help us really enter into a, a deep conversation around racism and reconciliation work. And Harriet, as we said, was just one. It was, you know, so that's that's the second thing that, that people um, could could do. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I guess probably should have started the, the third I'd offer, but maybe as the first one, if I could reorder, would be would be honestly to, to pray. Um, and And I think prayer really does help us join our heart with God's heart and see the world as God sees the world. And uh, I, I, I assume that we would all um, see the, the racism that does exist, the discrimination that is still unfortunately real. And uh, I, I got to think that as we pray, God would uh, help to make it clear what it is that we might do, but would again encourage to keep it simple and start with something that's manageable. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just Thank want you. to also suggest that um, Given the wider church experience that I've had, I know most most churches connect with a food bank or or some kind of social service provider in your local community that's doing work. Um, that organization is part of your circle already by the fact that you're actively helping them. Um, so that might be a good place to start to deepen the conversation to, to ask someone you know if if you can get together for for coffee to learn more ab ab about their story and their experience of being in that community and and maybe collaborate together mm -hmm. um build trust and collaborate on a small thing that you can do together mm -hmm. um but like yeah, if, if you're doing outreach, and most United Churches are, um, there's someone in your local community that you could probably um, begin to have that conversation with. Excellent. Thank you, Ronnie. That's fantastic advice. So already looking within who you know, who you're connected to for places where you could work together. Yeah, I love it. Excellent. Sarah, if I could add, yes. if I could add one more maybe to do, if people are looking for something, looking for something to do and, and where to start, there there's... I know um, my reading list got changed once my heart got changed around this. And, and in fact, I suspect there's people on this call who could suggest some books to read around anti-black racism in particular. I wonder if, if people want to put them in the chat, that would, that would, be, that would be great, partly because I'm trying to, <laughs> I have them at home and I'm trying to remember the names of these books. But again, I got, I got four or five books that, that are on my bookshelf now. Um, that I'll reread over time, and it, it really came because of the work that we felt led to do. So, um, if people put some names of those books, my guess is some of the ones I'm trying to look for. You've you've known, you've read, so please toss them in the chat. We can sort of work at this together. But 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 uh, a book study or even just reading it yourself um, can be really really helpful. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. There I come. Um. So, um, I wonder if uh, I see I see. You know, uh, Jamie, that folks are putting uh, a good number of, uh, of books in there. So um, we'll try to capture those in the follow up that we send out after as well so that everybody, uh, everybody can get them. Um, but I wonder uh, if we have any questions, anything that I haven't uh, asked Jamie and Ronnie about that folks are wondering either about their project or how they go about with with grants or building connections. Um, what would you what would you folks uh, um, like to hear? Sorry, guys, if I could sneak in, um, I was a little bit late. I was I'm sorry about that. I'm actually at work right now. Um, if you guys can give me a little bit of recap in terms of um, what specifically um, is the range we were looking at in terms of racism. Um, no, are, are we talking of that in general? Um, just, just trying to kind of catch me up with you guys, if you don't mind. Is that for me? Good. Yeah. So the the work that we started around table reconciliation um, is around anti-black racism. 
Uh, we did a four week series on that and and uh, but but was really trying to be very clear that that uh, that is not the only racism <laughs> um, or where reconciliation work is needed and was hoping that the principles we would learn there would apply to to other places as as well and uh, but the the work that we started was really focused around anti black racism mm -hmm. okay thank you um yeah. obviously me being indigenous that's also something that we face so um, just as much it's not it's not comparing one to the other by any means but but definitely something we experience uh just as much yeah absolutely absolutely agree yeah yeah for sure and and uh, i think as the table of reconciliation work continues um and we we certainly do as a church that we are working at that as well i think that will grow as well as part of this uh, yeah just sort of telling you kind of where it got started yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, um, so we have a question about, um, you know, you've, you've talked a little bit about learning and then, um, you know, how do we, how do we actually turn that learning into action, into, into doing something? And so Jamie, you'd mentioned, you know, a few folks from your church who have sort of applied that in their work life in, in different ways. Um, do you have other, um, sort of examples of how people have taken that learning and, and taken a, a concrete action from that? Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for, absolutely. Um, I think a real action for us has been, and I would encourage all of us to be thinking about is who do we put in leadership and to be more intentional about diversifying our, our leadership. Um, at NBUC, we have a, a three-year vision script and part of our vision script would be to be doubling our staff of 12 within the next three years, but intentionally diversifying our staff. And, and, and in some ways, um, our search team was obviously looking for the right person that God was calling us to to call to NBUC mm -hmm. with the with the right abilities and and faithfulness, um, but also looking for where we could be more diverse. And uh, and Ronnie and I have have uh, have talked about this, but the the first Sunday that Ronnie was with us, uh, her and I introduced communion together, and I had a call the next week from a, a racialized woman in our congregation who was just elated, just couldn't couldn't send an email or a text, had to call me. To say thank you, and, and I was very curious on what was happening for that person. Like, like, uh, yeah, and and so um, as I asked, hey, what what's um, what is the impact for you here? Like, what what are, what what are you encouraged by? She said three things really clearly. She said the first is that we are going to not just talk about this; we're we're really going to live this out. Um, the second was that she was imagining um, uh, all these young racialized women who now could see that they also could be in leadership, not just in the church, but wherever they might be. And the third was that the church has often been um, historically oppressive to people who are marginalized and to, to be a, a part of a community where we were trying to reverse that was really important to her. So, so again, I, that goes back to just really, I think it doesn't matter what size we are, it doesn't matter if we're talking about staff or volunteers, um, to be really intentional about diversifying our leadership in, in particular um, is really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you want to add something like Kevin done some reading of some of Robin D'Angelo's work um, and also um, coming on board at NBC. Um, I am getting a sense from conversations that are evolving that that beyond diversifying staff, um, I think people are intuitively aware that once you introduce racialized persons to staff, right, um, then um, systemic racism has a way of showing up, not intentionally, it's just because it's there and it's embedded in history. So one of the things I'm excited about is energy around diversity training, energy around unlearning systemic racism. So that this doesn't just move from, well, we did this great thing that we diversified our staff. Okay, so let's let's be self-aware as a staff. That excites me. And I just feel that I I need to name that. And that that's a very courageous step that um, some people are kind of um, nudging <laughs> that, hey, <laughs> yeah. we're interested in this. So that that makes me feel hopeful as the newest racialized person on staff. Excellent. Thank you, Ronnie. 
Um, we have a question about um, focusing on um, a grants grants that focus on other things, uh, for example, indigenous right relations. Um, and yes, so there are grants for all kinds of projects from the foundation. Uh, we're highlighting this one in particular because it's Black History Month and, and you know, we want to make sure that um, we're sharing stories of work that's happening uh, currently. And um, so, but I would say uh, if you take a look at the foundation's website on our granting pages, you'll see the full breadth of the kinds of projects that we have supported and um, we have uh, supported a number of projects related to uh, reconciliation and Indigenous justice in the past, along with uh, ones for climate, ones for youth ministry, ones for senior ministry, a whole a whole breadth. So um, yeah, please do check out our granting section for, for the information and uh, get in touch with our, our staff who work on grants for a conversation about um, what you'd like to do, uh, because they are quite happy to have those conversations as well. So um we are coming close to our time for the day I want to be respectful of that but I also don't you know if folks have uh other um questions then uh happy to to spend a few more minutes uh together talking about them and I would say too if you know if something comes to mind later please do uh send us an email and we can get in touch with uh Jamie and Ronnie and uh get you answers as well Yes, and we will share the books. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge reading list. I think, <laughs> Jamie, you probably got reading from now until next year. Awesome. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll just take this opportunity to express my uh, deep appreciation to both you, Jamie, and you, Ronnie, for, for your work and for, for everything that you are doing at North Bremley and BUC uh, and for being with us today and sharing your journey. Really, really appreciate that. I uh, want to thank everybody who's joined for taking time out of their busy day for, uh, for this conversation. I hope you are able to take something uh, good away from it. And... Um, um again just be in touch if there's there's any way we can support you and uh we'll look forward to seeing you at a webinar in the future thanks everybody have a fabulous day and uh we'll talk soon thanks, thanks everyone thanks everybody, God thanks, everybody. Bye bye.